You're watching Bill on Bankruptcy. I'm Leah Pacquia. I'm joined now, as always, by Bloomberg News Bankruptcy columnist Bill Rochelle. Be sure to go read his daily bankruptcy column. It's available on BloombergLaw.com, and it's also on the Bloomberg Terminal. Lots going on this week, and the top story is a little bit surprising. Everyone's been talking about Hostess, but we have something bigger. Patriot Coal. Uh, the bankruptcy judge in that case has moved the case from Manhattan to St. Louis. That's where the company's located. Bill, this feels like a big deal. Can you tell us how big a deal this is in terms of bankruptcy court history? I think that the Patriot decision is going to change the debate on venue and where companies ought to be entitled to file bankruptcy. This was actually a no-brainer of a decision written by bankruptcy uh, Judge Shelley Chapman in New York. Patriot Coal had no connections with New York. Uh, what they did to be able to file bankruptcy in New York was essentially on the eve of bankruptcy, they incorporated two small subsidiaries with hardly anything in the way of assets in New York and then used that as the basis for filing the entire corporate empire for reorganization in New York, but it did not work. Now, what is interesting to me is that uh, Judge Chapman is insinuating, at least as I read her opinion, to say that had these small subsidiaries had long-standing incorporation in New York, then she would have allowed the case to stay here because the great bulk of creditors wanted New York rather than a court in West Virginia or in Missouri. And on that basis, what we see in this opinion is what really amounts to the near impossibility of convincing a judge in New York or Delaware to give up a case. Mm -hmm. And on that basis, I am wondering if what will result from this opinion is at some point in the next couple of years an examination of whether or not the venue rules regarding placing bankruptcies is going to be examined perhaps in Congress. Yeah, big topic. We've been on it for pretty much all year. Uh, moving on, let's take a look at the Hostess brand's uh, liquidation. It's been commanding headlines all over the country. What's right. the latest? Well, I want to point out something that's a little different. Uh, not the 18,500 people that are losing their jobs, whether the labor union committed suicide, we talked about that already, and so is the press all over the world. What really intrigues me is that it appears, at least for the time being, if not permanently, Hostess does not have the ability now to pay the bills it has run up during Chapter 11. It's administratively insolvent? Is exactly, that what you're saying? Exactly, ah, exactly. So lawyers have to worry about getting paid here. Well, the lawyers have a way of protecting themselves, but that is an issue we could get into later. What is interesting to me is that this situation presents a, I'll call it a, a perilous uh, uh, territory for bankruptcy judge Drain because the bankruptcy code really isn't well suited for dealing with situations like this where companies can't pay their bills in Chapter 11. And so what we're seeing Judge Drain do already is to come up with these brand new constructs for how to deal with this difficult situation. And I am not clear how this is going to work out on the long run and whether it will work out on the long run, but I guarantee you one thing. It's something to keep your eye on. If it works, it's a template for the future. If it doesn't work, then it means we should do cases like hostess this way again in the future. And we have some want ads. Which six companies are for sale this week? Okay, first off, Houston, Texas. No, excuse me, Dallas, Texas. H&M Oil. This is a producer in the Gulf and in Texas. Uh, it is a more ripe candidate now for acquisition because, guess what? The bankruptcy court recently appointed a Chapter 11 trustee. If you are in the hotel resort business, then I refer you to the Nanaloa Volcano Resort on the island of Hilo in Hawaii. This is a case, by the way, that is not in Delaware. It is a case uh, in uh, Honolulu. Finally, I give you pipeline data. The name is not what it suggests. This is a credit card purchaser. It went into Chapter 11 recently with the intention of selling. The case is pending in Delaware. And uh, we have a couple of uh, bankruptcy opinions at the appellate level this week. Tell us what you need to know for the advance sheets. Well, the first one is hot off the press. It came down not two hours before we went on the air here. The U.S. Court of Appeals for the Fifth Circuit in New Orleans upheld the decision by the bankruptcy court in the Vitro Mexican glassmaker case. This is a real biggie because uh, Vitro won approval of a reorganization plan 
in Mexico by the Mexican court. Bondholders objected, that is say U.S. bondholders objected. They lost routinely in Mexico, but the bankruptcy judge in Dallas in June refused to enforce the opinion, and it was upheld in a 60-page opinion by Circuit Judge Carolyn King, who for my money at least is the best versed bankruptcy judge uh, on the circuit to uh, courts these days. This is an enormously important opinion. If you are in the area of cross-border bankruptcy, you absolutely must read it at first opportunity. Next, we have a case out of a district court in Arizona, and this is, case is one which tells us that if you're going into Chapter 7, you cannot pay a uh, retainer to your lawyer in advance. Now, even if that retainer is uh, maintained by the lawyer with a security interest in his trust account. Nonetheless, that money cannot be used to pay the Chapter 7 debtor's bankruptcy expenses. This is a case that follows up on the Supreme Court's Lamey decision. This case in Arizona is called Glimsher versus Mullen. And finally, let's go to the Southern District of Florida. There we have a district judge who bent over backwards to rule that the IRS is and get this Lee, a mere conduit, and thus cannot be sued for a fraudulent transfer. Oh dear. <laughs> oh yes, very solicitous of protecting the U.S. government. Sure. Uh, this is not the only case to that effect. There was also one two years ago uh, in, uh, I think it was in Michigan, to the same result. This case in Florida is called U.S. US versus Minotti. All right. Thanks for that, Bill. That's what we have for this week. If you'd like to learn more about the cases and issues we have, be sure to go read Bill's column. It's available on BloombergLaw.com, and it's also on the Bloomberg Terminal. You can see more of our videos on YouTube, and you can follow our updates on Twitter. I'm Lee Pacquiao. Thanks for watching, and see you next week.